Hi folks, this is Mohan Raghavan. Today we are going to see machine learning session 020. In this video, we are going to discuss on Euclidean distance. It is one of the frequent method to measure the distance between two points in machine learning. And however, it is not only related to the machine learning, it's a general concept. And however, if you see in machine learning other concepts such are like K nearest neighbor in classification or in clustering, you can see high hierarchy clustering. So in those areas, we will use the distance. We will measure the distance. That algorithms will use the Euclidean distance internally. So it's very essential to know what is Euclidean distance in machine learning so that wherever the Euclidean distance is being used, so there and all, you will use the feature scaling as well. So those are not separate topics, but in this video, we will see what is Euclidean distance, how it is being measured, and what are the let's say packages or uh, modules are available to measure the Euclidean distance in machine learning. Agenda of this video, Euclidean distance overview and then formula analysis and practical on Euclidean distance with SciPy. So Euclidean distance overview, the Euclidean distance between two points in either the plan or let's say three dimensional spaces the length of segment connecting two points it's almost obvious way of representing distance between two points so this is a general definition about the euclidean distance in a simpler way we can understand like this is one of the method to measure the distance between two given points so it can be a 2d or it can be a 3d as well so after that we will be knowing the pythagoras theorem so it's generally about the right angle triangle so if you draw the let's say the square on the hypothesis, then it will be the sum of the squares drawn by the other two sides. So we will see in the next slides. So however, the formula of Euclidean distance is like, let's consider you have two points. So it will have the X and Y coordinates. So X1, Y1 and X2, Y2. The formula to find the distance between those two points is like X2 minus X1 whole square plus Y2 minus Y1 whole square by summing the result we will take the square root of this sum result and i have mentioned the reference here as well for this definition so in this point we will just note down the main points such as like x1 y1 and x2 y2 is our original points right and the distance between this x2 minus x1 because it's x2 is already there so if you draw a, a vertical line it will reach the x-axis in the point of x2 so if you want to measure between two points here the last point is x2 and starting point is x1. So the distance between these two points are x2 minus x1. The same way, here the point is y2, here the y1. So if you draw a horizontal line, it will reach here, it will be in the y1. So if you want to measure the distance between y2 and y1, it will be like y2 minus y1. And after that, we will just consider these points. So it's actual distance, distance d. So if you see this diagram, you will come to know that this is right angle triangle. So in the next slide or in the formula analysis, we will more investigate on how this formula works actually. And one more thing, we will recollect our formula. It is the square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. So in a right angle triangle, the square of the long side is equal to the sum of the squares of other two sides, a simple definition. So if you see the right angle triangle, so in our case, the long side will be our D and the two other small sides will be Y2 minus Y1 and X2 minus X1. So what actually Pythagoras theorem tells us like, if you draw the square on the very long side of the right angle triangle, which in our side, it's like a D. On your right side, you can see C is the very longest path and the very longest distance. So if you draw the circle over the C side, and if you draw the, uh, sorry, not circle, it's a square. And if you draw the squares on A side and B side, so the summation of A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So in our case, we want the C value. So in that case, we will give square root of A squared plus B squared is equal to C. So come to our just diagram. If you consider, you want, if you want to have the distance D, so it will be the square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. That's what we got originally as a formula. So this is about our Euclidean distance. 
So in machine learning, it is not only the way to calculate the distance between two points. There are different ways, but this is the one of the frequent ways to find the distance between the two points. So practical and Euclidean distance using SciPy. So as we discuss the formula, we will write it down here as well. The square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. So I have seen three approaches here. So first one is like a direct formula, a SciPy spatial import distance module. So with this point, let's consider our points are 5 comma 5 and 8 comma 15, respectively x1, y1 and x2, y2. So distance will be like simply calling that a module with Euclidean method. So Euclidean A comma B, so you will get the result directly. So we will go line by one. So first we will import this. Imported, then after we will just mention the A comma B, fine. Now we are going to measure the distance. So if you go to the variable explorer, you can see distance will be 10.44, okay? So approach two will be like our direct formula. Let's say X2 minus X1, so here X2 will be our 8 and x1 will be 5 the same way y1 will be 15 and y sorry y2 will be 15 and y1 will be 5 and we are minusing and we are just squaring that and after that we will sum it up and we will take the square root for that for using the square root function we are using the numpy so we need to import the numpy Then after I'm executing there, it's like a very direct formula. So R1, enter. So now go to the variable explorer. So it's the same result. So we can confirm that one. However, we have another approach. It is just like, since we are passing the values very statically, so we can send very dynamically also. In that case, we need to send A and B. But actually in NumPy, we cannot send directly A and B because it's a tuple. So we need to convert into array. So that's why we are converting a into a1 as array and b into b1 as array then after we are sending this one so whatever values in a and b so first we will execute this one and you see how the a and b1 looks like so a it is just like 5 comma 5 and let's say b it's 8 comma 15 but after converting into array, let's see how it looks like. So it is like an array, right? So it has two rows and one column. The same way here, B1, two rows and one column, eight and 15. So now we are sending as an array. So what will happen is it will iterate for every row and it will sum it up. For example, so it will iterate for five minus another one so it will take it means that it may be have a 3d also so what it will do is like this np sum it will iterate all the elements in the array and it will minus from a1 minus b1 and it will actually square it and it will have the value like that it will iterate all the values in that array and after all it will sum it up and it will give that and after that we are making the square root for this so i will execute this one and now we need to see the R2. So R2 also gives the same value. So in all three cases, we are just achieving, just we are finding the distance between two points. So this module will help not only for, let's say 2D, it will help for 3D also. In that case, it will be like X2 minus X1 and X1, sorry, X3 minus X2 and X2 minus X1 and X1 minus X3. Like that it will have one more, let's say the part of that which will consider the third element. So in general, we will have, let's say X1, Y1, Z1, and X2, Y2, Z2. So for simplicity, we will convert, I mean, we will just see this as a only 2D array. So it will be same like our 2D array only, it will have one more element. For example, it will have, let's say one more thing. P. So just we will execute one more time this A and B. Now we will execute because this one works as an array. So completed if you go to the R2. 
so r2 will be 20 so it works fine for the 3d also three dimensional so this is about euclidean distance and however just we saw euclidean distance has been used in the k nearest neighbor in classification model and however it is being used in the hierarchical clustering so wherever you find this uh, let's say euclidean distance it will go as a geometrical distance between these two points and one more thing here i want to mention is if you use the euclidean distance there may be a chance to use the feature scaling because in some places the values or the input parameters are the x values may be very large in cases like a salary you take and you take the number of vehicles you own so if you take this vehicles can be within the range of 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 only maximum but the salary will be 30000 40000 so if you find the difference between this one the difference will be very negligible which may cause the another variable let's say in our case the vehicle count may be very negligible it can be ignorable also so in that case we need to apply the feature scaling so in that order if you want to apply the feature scaling just check that your algorithm uses a Euclidean distance or not. In that case, if it is using the Euclidean distance, then definitely we may need the future scaling. But however, I hope this video covers the basic about the Euclidean distance. And with that, I just believe you can and you are off way there. This is a quote from Theodore Roosevelt. So it means that you believe. So almost 50% completed and we will go further to achieve our goals. So with this good that I will complete this session. So thanks all. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.